Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, the redhead, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight home girl, the blonde, mm. also known as, what is it? Razor blade. Razor. <laughs> She's fat razor cat. Blade. I'm razor blade. <laughs> Um, Beatrice. Hi. And we are here gathered today with you to talk about Vanderpump Rules. Yes, we were going to do Seeking Sister Wives today too, but we decided we're just going to do that on Tuesday slash Wednesday, depending on if you're a patron. So just deal with it. Yeah, we're just going to keep Thursdays for VPR. Yeah. Now, before we get into the episode and a little bit of news that we wanted to share with you, we must remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words, especially her. Yeah. She's a millennial. I am. We have dumb opinions. Especially her. Especially, how dare you? Especially (laughs) me. I'm a Gen X. Eh. Um, But we say what we want and we try to have fun. And so if you're a fool, you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you're down and you're ready to party welcome to this one yes and if you are down and ready to party go follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we're thinking about reacting to the newest season of my 600 pound life on there okay um we're already reacting to it because that yes. started this week and we mm-hmm. were texting each other as we were eating last mega night. mega snacks <laughs> oh, for My sure God. i can't watch that unless i eat oh i have to eat a lot of snacks a whole meal preferably nachos bel grande baby Ooh, oh yes. yeah with the sour ah, cream yummy. that was fun but we do cover that mm-hmm. on patreon and now if you are watching on youtube first of all hello you look lovely today please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do helps us to grow the rtc community thank you um before we get into this episode there was like a little article that came out after rachel levis filed her, I think, bogus lawsuit <laughs> about revenge porn. Ooh. And the t- I'm just going to read the title and then we can Kay. kind of talk about it. It reads, Tom Sandoval is crushed <laughs> by ex Rachel Levis and her revenge porn lawsuit and thought that they would spend forever together. Okay. As insiders claim, he will likely pay her off to avoid a huge mess in court after causing irreversible Trauma. Oh Irreversible God. trauma. I'm not, I don't want to make light of it because I do think that Rachel experienced trauma from all of this and, of course. and a lot of other people did as well. But what do you think about Tom and his PR team <sighs> releasing a statement that he's really sad about this turn of events? He's not fucking sad. He's already dating someone else. I know. So like, who cares? He's scared. He's losing money, honey. Yes, of course he is. I mean, that's, you fuck around and find out, my dude. Like, I don't know what you fucking expected. I say this every episode. I'm, you know, I'm like, Lala, we don't need to crucify him and right. make merch about him and stuff like that. Like, We don't need to make him feel so terrible. I would so in a terrible. heartbeat if we could sell it. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. worm with a mustache, <laughs> yes. stickers and stuff. I mean, that's funny. But right. we don't need to be crucifying him over and over again for his mistake. But at the same time, it's like, dude. I don't know what you fucking expected. And you're guilty as fuck. Yeah. If you're going to pay her off because you recorded her doing sexual acts without her consent. Legally. I mean, dude, what did you expect? We were going to spend forever together. That's why I kept the video of you doing porn shit. Right. I don't even know what she was doing. I don't I don't know either. Um I did see that Ariana, I always say Ariana. It's Ariana. Yeah. went on a podcast and I want to say it was Sheena's podcast. Shenanigans. Shenanigans, which is weird to me because it feels like this season is setting them up to not be friends. Yeah. But at this point, if she's on Sheena's podcast, they are friends. Maybe it's mm. a different podcast. I don't know. All I know is that Ariana said, "I want to be very clear." I do not have the video. I did not send the video to anyone. I barely watched the video. I Mm. identify what the hell was going on in the video. And then I deleted the video. I did not disseminate and distribute anything. So that's her statement. I believe it. She seems really strong in that. Yeah. I think if she did do it, I think there's enough clout goblins in the world that would come out and say, yeah, she sent me that video. Mm -hmm. I also think they might be able to look at her records to verify this. I don't know. Yeah. But she was strong on that. But Mm -hmm. it makes me wonder about their money. She has two lawsuits, right? She's got this lawsuit with Rachel. They both have two lawsuits. They have this lawsuit with Rachel, and then they have the lawsuit with themselves. Mm -hmm. She's not paying him 
the mortgage payments. He's saying she owes me $90,000. He's put all that money into renovations into the house. She's paid for all of the furniture, which has to be split between them. Mm -hmm. So two lawsuits and all of this money in play, a lien on the house, allegedly like, I think Ariana is in a much better position than Tom because she's got all of these deals that we're starting to see on the show. But I think Tom with his fucking failed restaurant... (laughs) His weird band that he has to pay everybody. He pays everybody. Oh, he does? He pays everybody. Oh, shit. Everybody. Out of his pocket. Other than the show, like, where's the money coming from for him? Well, I guess he's got to do more gigs with his weird cover band (laughs) to make money. Because if we're supposed to believe this narrative on season 11 of him being like, well, I had to go on tour right after Scandival happened because I had no money and I had to sing songs talking shit about all of you guys right. because I was so broke and I had no money. It's so like if we're supposed to believe that, then I mean, this dude is struggling, I think. Yeah. Especially if he lost like all of his deals and stuff like his brand deals and shit. And yeah. Oh, well, I mean, he did go on a TV show, apparently, like he did have an opportunity to come his so way, but he made some money there. Maybe. But I'm just wondering what what the money is actually looking like, specifically for Tom Sandoval, especially if he's going to try and settle this. Yeah. I'm like, how much money is the least amount of money that Rachel would take? Right. If it were you and oh. one of your exes recorded you illegally and that shit was sent around, like what would be your like lowest amount that you would accept from a man who's got money oh i mean for from him i'd be like millions yeah give me millions bitch because that can ruin people's lives i mean especially with sexual shit we saw that on 90 day fiance with jasmine when gino his dumbass, oh was sending God. her nudes she got fired from her job right and she was like an actual working lady working at a fucking college or something teaching something teaching right. english or some shit mm-hmm. so she lost her fucking job like that can ruin people's reputations forever especially with rachel because she was a pageant girl and stuff i right. mean she was already like feeling the loss of being out of the pageant world because she aged out right at the ripe old age of 28 right you know so i mean i would be like i millions, would be baby. Uh, yeah i would be asking for a good chunk of change mm-hmm. and so He's going to have to pay something. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be weird. And we will definitely continue to share with you whatever Mm -hmm. we hear. Yes. Because I'm listening. Me too. I got my raccoon monocle out, honey. (laughs) Yes, bitch. All right. Let's get into this episode of Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 6, entitled... Saw it on the gram. The Graham Cracker. Oh, saw it on the Graham. I don't know why they're calling it that when they just changed his name to Hippie. And he's not even in this episode. I know. It's like, okay. <laughs> like, whatever. We don't make the titles, though. So we start with the episode with everybody waking up from Tahoe, like their first night in Tahoe. Um, Sheena and Lala have a little conversation about Ariana because Sheena's struggling. Okay. <laughs> She's struggling with her relationship with Tom Sandoval because he gave her money. During COVID, right. which you picked, you predicted that last week. Right. I talked about I saw the scene. Yeah, yeah. You knew it. So she talks about that. And then, you know, Tom's journaling, Tom Sandoval. Oh, okay. In his diary. So both of these things I really want to get into yeah. with you. First of all, the journaling. Yeah. Like, I don't know about you, but I've had journals before. These are my private thoughts. These yeah. are often like my darkest thoughts, right. my deepest thoughts. This is not something that I share with anybody much less a camera crew. No, and he has it wide ass open for everybody to read, which I paused <laughs> and <you>? I read. <laughs> <laughs> what did it say? Well, the majority of it, like there was some blurred out spots. So mm-hmm. I'm curious as to what he was talking about there. But the majority of it was the same crap he's saying, which is, it's so great that we're in Tahoe and like everybody's being really nice to me. Sheena said hi to me at the airport and I oh, cried. No. Are you kidding? Literally, that's what he said. <laughs> he's like, I've been feeling a lot of emotions. What a loser. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Sorry. I know. Okay. It's really cringe. And he's lying in his bed. And yeah, then obviously he's up. being filmed. It's just like, oh my God, what are we doing here? It's really what performative. What are we doing here? I've been reading on the subreddits and people are really questioning production. Like, is production really trying to execute 
a Tom Sandoval redemption arc? Like, do they want us to forgive him? Or is production in a different way trying to continue to bury him and people like Sheena? Because Mm. I think Tom thinks he's doing something. I think Sheena thinks that she's doing something in her various scenes. But I walk away from them and I'm like, I can't stand her. Yeah. Shut up. Why are you on my television? Stop crying. (laughs) I can't deal with them. For me with Tom, it feels like he's being coached. Like it feels like somebody, his PR team or the producers or whatever are telling him what to say and how to react because initially he'll react pretty shitty and he'll get all defensive and he'll be like, but what about you guys though? Right. You guys hurt my feelings though. I'm not a piece of shit. It's all you guys. But then he'll come back and be like, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. Right. I'm here to grow. Yeah. I'm here to heal. That original reaction is his actual reaction. Exactly. The thing he does after the fact is to just try and clean it up. Exactly. It's inauthentic entirely. Anyway, I just thought that was so preposterous. Yeah. Can I take a moment, by the way, to apologize for my voice? I feel like I'm going to be coughing. Well, I've been been sick. Yeah. You don't care that your mother-in-law's sick? No, I care. But you're too uh, focused on your coughing. Well, I'm having a hard time. Joe Rogan literally will be hacking. Really? On the fucking microphone and shit. I have that misophonia stuff where it's mouth noises, voices. I hear saliva in the mouth. And if I hear too much of it, I do not. I freak out. I can't. I literally can't (laughs) listen to it. So I'm listening to myself. Like trying to um, exorcise all this fucking phlegm. And I'm just like, I, I'm sorry if I'm grossing anybody out, but I'm still kind of working through my sickness. And I apologize. It's okay. I'm trying to, so if I'm go- that's why. We forgive you. I'm sick, but I'm working anyway. <laughs> Nobody For appreciates you. what I do. You. I appreciate you. it. Okay. I'm here anyway. and queer. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Get over it. Well, now let's go on to Sheena though. Yeah. Sheena with Lala. Lying there, mm-hmm. talking to Lala, making sure that we all know what we had talked about last week, which is Mm -hmm. during the pandemic when Sheena was let go from her shenanigans podcast with whatever platform she was affiliated with, they were not filming. So she's not making any money from that. Yeah. She had just had Summer Moon Mm -hmm. and they did not have any money because, of course, Brock's not working. I mean, he's a loser. (laughs) I think Brock was working. (laughs) No, he's golfing. Absolutely not. Yeah. And so Tom Sandoval caught wind of this Mm -hmm. and sent her several thousands of dollars i don't know how much that is yeah anywhere from four to seven to ten or more and so she's struggling with the fact that he's been a real friend to her and now she just is expected to turn her back on him yeah okay real friends whatever i mean it's it feels like he was buying her friendship a little Mm -hmm. bit and I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, Sheena was talking about how they've been friends for 15 years. So like that, I can understand that perspective. I get it's hard to let go of a friendship for that for that long. But at the same time, you're saying to Lala, I'm team Ariana until the day I die. So then why are you struggling with it? Right. You know what I mean? It's like, it just feels like you're being a little dramatic. And another thing I wanted to bring up about this is that at the time that he sends her this money, so I would assume it's 2020, mm-hmm. right? It's around the time of his refi, which is when the rates were really low, honey, because I availed myself of those rates That's too, right? Um, so he sends her this thousands of dollars, but like, isn't that also Ariana's money? Like, I'm not sure about their accounts mm-hmm. and their shared accounts, separate accounts, but I do know that they were paying their mortgage before the refi, according to Ariana, outside of their joint account. Mm. And so I'm just, what I'm saying is, did Tom send her that money or did Tom and Ariana send her that money? Mm. And if it was Tom and Ariana that sent her that money, why are you just bugging about Tom? That's a good point. Maybe it was both of them. I mean, I can't it would have imagine. had to. Have, can your wife send somebody ten thousand no. dollars and not tell you about it? Fuck I know these no. are rich people and stuff like that, but I'm sorry if you're sending ten thousand dollars, you better fucking tell me. The IRS knows, so I better know for sure. But to play devil's advocate, though, I know a bunch of couples. Like I know people who are married who have been married for ten plus years who have separate bank accounts, and like their mm-hmm. husbands don't know anything of their finances. Right. All they know is. Can you pay half the bills? Right. So maybe they have separate accounts. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, still, though. It did make me wonder, though. Yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. I mean, it would be very interesting. Right. And if if it was Tom and Ariana, then yeah, why is she just focusing on Tom? Right. Like, he's such a humanitarian and such a good fucking friend. Right. To send you money for that. I mean, yeah, it's a nice gesture. But again, like, what was the motive? Mm-hmm. Was he buying your friendship? Probably. And Sheena strikes me as somebody who's a little easily manipulative. 
Yeah. Or ma- manipulated. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So I don't know about that. And then while everybody's getting ready at Tahoe for their guided meditation, we bop on over to <laughs> Ariana and Katie. Ariana's doing some little photo shoot for her cocktail book because she's a single lady. Right. And she's in her bad bitch era. She's right. Inspired by Alanis, Alanis Morissette and Beyonce. You gotta know. I mean, yes. so she's coming up with this really petty um, cocktail book, <laughs> but I love it. I mean, yeah. I think it's great. Well, see, here's what you don't know. Okay. Um, a few seasons ago, I don't know, what is it, Raccoons? Like five to seven seasons ago, Ariana had an idea for a cocktail book, mm-hmm. much like this one, but not with a focus on being single. But she had all these cocktails that she had created because she's a mixologist and she had this big idea and then tom the worm with a mustache (laughs) horned his way into her project and basically insisted that he should be a part of it he ends up on the cover of it Um. ends up collaborating with her she lets him come into the project and basically changes it Mm. and so this cocktail book that she's doing right now in the season is a response to what he did in the cocktail book that she tried to produce ah so that's what she was saying in this season scene she was saying that like she felt like tom would never let her do or could never think that she could do anything on her own right and i was like what does she mean by that yeah she's talking about their joint really pushy oh really pushy and condescending Mm. i don't remember exactly everything that happened but it was very much a vibe of like are you sure about that Mm. like are you sure we shouldn't do something like this like let me just try this i think it's gonna be better oh i hate that yeah very manipulative and she just kind of let him do it Ugh. yeah well i mean she looks beautiful now oh my god and her photo shoot i'm like her hair is perfect she's doing this photo shoot she's telling katie all of the names of all of her cocktails and they're totally you know jabbing at fucking tom i love it petty 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 and then they have like a little brief discussion because i guess sheena texted ariana while they're at tahoe she like telling her about what's going on with sandoval and everything sheena was very honest she was just like well nothing deep nothing's Mm -hmm. really happened nobody's fought we're not really talking to him it's like whatever and ariana reiterates to katie well then that's fine but i'm not going to be friends with anybody who's friends with my ex Right. So, I mean, that's fine. Which is really clear. Yeah. And I feel like Sheena's probably heard this before, which is what is causing her this tremendous turmoil for the cameras. But Ariana, that's her boundary. And so, like, we always kind of talk about people who try to impose their boundaries on other people's actions. Right. But Ariana's like, no, 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 do whatever you want to do. But as for me and my house, Mm -hmm. if this is who you choose to associate yourself with, like, we just can't, I can't hang with you. It's not safe for me to be in that relationship a la cody brown yeah <laughs> i know and Mary so many brown. people use that so unsafe now. so yeah. unsafe but i mean i agree with ariana i was watching this twice today and i'm like you know i don't see anything wrong with that i don't see anything wrong with her saying i just don't want to be friends with you for friends with my toxic ass ex and we know because tom sandoval is a fucking narcissist so it's like yeah why would you want to be friends with somebody who's associating yeah, with that devil's advocate ariana which we've addressed before like these are also your co-workers and tom True. sandoval is everyone's co-worker so what are you telling them to do that they're going to refuse to film a scene with him on like the biggest season after scandoval which means if they don't film with him they don't get paid for that True. like so there's nuances yeah that i think ariana is being a little bit obtuse about purposefully yeah but at the same time, I respect her conviction. And she's yeah. absolutely 100% entitled to that opinion. And maybe her harshness is just being heightened because of the producers. Like, maybe it's not really like that IRL. You know what I mean? Like, maybe it's, it's just for the show. It's not harsh to me. I well, mean, no. I, don't, I don't feel like... And even when we get to the scene where she's actually talking to Sheena, who's having like a fucking breakdown after meditation with Tom, <laughs> she's like taking care of Sheena. Yes. She's like, are you okay? You know, I love you. Even though you're fucking meditating with this man who destroyed my entire life. Right. Um, She's very kind. I know. Not and harsh thoughtful. at all. Yeah. I agree. Well, let's get to the guided meditation because this whole let's thing was it. cringe as why do i hate brock so much i mean i actually didn't mind him this episode i know but i can't and i tried i understood that he was saying things that advocate for the way a lot of us feel but coming out of his big fucking mouth (laughs) i couldn't take it and when he shows up late to meditation yeah like making a grand entrance i'm just like i hate you so much (laughs) i really want i wonder what exists inside of me that you remind me of that i I need to fucking go to therapy for because i hate you (laughs) 
<laughs> like, does he remind you of an ex or something? Oh, God, maybe. 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 But he's such a clout goblin. He places himself in the middle of that fucking half circle of of characters, of yeah. castmates that have been on this program for 100 years. He places himself <laughs> right in the middle and starts talking and shit. I'm like, shut up. Why are you talking? Who do you think you are? <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind him, though. I will say some of the shit that he was saying, I'm like, it's pretty based. He's calling out Tom Sandoval on the gondola and shit. But who are you? He's defending Sheena. Right. I'm just saying. Right. And that was good. I mean, that was a good conversation. But to me, it should have come from somebody else. It should have come from Sheena. Like, I just don't understand who he thinks he is to have all of these very important conversations yeah. for around shit that he wasn't even around for. True. Yeah. He's acting like he knows everybody when he's literally nobody. <laughs> well, on the side, he talks to Sheena the way that he does. Yeah. Like, dude, you don't work. She pays for absolute. I'm going off. I'm going crazy. Yeah. I'll stop. But <laughs> you do nothing. Yeah. So shut up. Sit over there and look pretty. Yeah. Okay. With all your muscles and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and your speedo. Your I know. For real. <laughs> When they go to start guided meditation, like he went and left at 5 a.m. to go golf in South Lake Tahoe. And then he shows up hella fucking late to the guided meditation. He's like, sorry, I was going 120 down the freeway. I'm like, oh, my God, shut up. Right. This lady's taking time out of her day to do this stupid guided meditation with y'all. When you guys don't even take it seriously. They're just sitting there closing their eyes. Well, Tom took it seriously. He sat down with the meditation lady guide shannon lady he's like well just so you know like she doesn't know like yeah, she wasn't there for scandal right. like you didn't watch the show during scandal but you knew exactly what was yes. going on she's like um i know what happened yeah i know you're a fuck boy i know you're a cheater but she's just sitting there like oh okay i'll try to help the group we'll see what we can do i was really fucking cringe and once mm-hmm. they actually start doing the meditation of course we got to focus on sheena and sandoval because they're paired together and sheena's like having a panic attack about it already why i don't know because her back's touching him listen like, I i'm gonna i <laughs> my first in- instinct is to say shut up sheena for real it's same. not about you yeah you don't have to be here if it makes you so fucking uncomfortable but then i'm gonna take a step back and say i again i say i think this girl has legitimate anxiety for sure i mean does she still have some postpartum stuff going on because that can linger for quite some time if it's mm-hmm. untreated like she's got ocd she's got fear like i can see that she would be emotional in any situation much less something involving a friend of so many years but at the same time i mean just like oh she's just making everybody comfort her and her feelings like and she's just crying non-stop during this meditation because at one point shannon the instructor is like turn to your partner and imagine that this is the last time you'll ever see them and then sheena starts bawling right and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. To me, I was watching this and I'm like, am I fucking jaded? Like, am I such a piece <laughs> of shit that I'm watching these people do a meditation that I'm like, this is cringe? But it just felt really like produced and it felt a little dramatic, especially on Sheena's part. And then yeah, a afterwards, little. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. No, it was very produced. It was ridiculous. I mean, it wasn't happenstance that she got paired up with Tom. Like, right. it's all very calculated. Yeah. And then there's Tom with his one glycerin tear rolling down his face i know and sheena like thinks that that's genuine and then starts crying about it and then does they, she yeah she says she does okay she's like having a whole ass reaction i'm about just it. dubious about everything me too yeah it feels very produced it feels like she's acting it feels like he's acting it feels like everybody's acting yes i think it's all an act and then after the whole meditation and everybody's healed apparently sheena goes and cries more in the bathroom with lala and then she texts ariana and she's like, we just had a really uh, intense uh, meditation and I'm just feeling a lot. So intense with all the cameras and everything. You had a spiritual experience in a produced and fucking curated moment. <laughs> okay. Know. It was really ridiculous. But she does reiterate to Ariana in the text. She's like, just know that I love you no matter what. And I'm always going to be like having your back. So, I mean, that's good. But uh-huh. then I'm like, then why the whole tears and the theatrics? Right. I mean, but she's not because we see the preview where she's jealous about dancing with the stars. Yes. Like <laughs> she's not. And and Lala is also very, very jealous. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. She's not. She is team Ariana, but she's vacillating and she's 
trying to get permission to do something she knows Ariana doesn't want her to do and will never be okay with. 100%. And because of that, because Ariana is going to continue to withhold that, she's going to make a victim out of herself. Why can't it just be about my pain in the situation? Why can't you see that and then let me do this thing that ultimately betrays you? Yeah, because Ariana set the boundary and she told you a million fucking times, I don't want to be friends with somebody who's friends with my ex. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. It's like you can't have sorry your cake and eat, eat too. Yeah. For real, sorry about <laughs> it. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. You, you're either going to do it or you're not. But like yep. stop crying about it when exactly. Ariana already told you. And again, when she calls in this scene with Katie and Ariana, like Ariana's just trying to take care of Sheena because Sheena's obviously an emotional mess. But yes. like Katie has Sheena's number. I know. I know. I like Katie in mm-hmm. this because she's clocking it and she's like, the fuck? So we'll get to that scene. Okay. There. So Sorry, I'm jumping all around. No, you're fine. I'm all crazy. It's, it's basically right after that because after the meditation, they go on a gondola ride. We'll talk about that in a second. It's dumb. Then we bop over to Katie and Ariana who are interviewing randos for their restaurant. That never opens. With, yeah, <laughs> with some bitch named Penny who's right. interrupting constantly, which I hate. I'm like, oh, right. And, well, up. she's taking over the conversation yeah. for a shop or a restaurant that she does not own. Yeah. But I don't know, whatever. Yeah. And this is where Sheena then FaceTimes Ariana and Katie and Sheena's on the boat on Lake Tahoe and she starts crying. She's like, it was just a lot. The guided meditation was just a lot. You're a bummer. I we should have brought you to Tahoe. We're For here real. to party. What the <laughs> fuck is going on, sad sack pig pen? You're in, a, you're in a fucking beautiful place. Yeah, I'm like, I've down. never been to Lake Tahoe. She misses her kid probably. Probably. She's probably having massive anxiety because her child is not there. Probably. Yeah. Because she's been struggling and Brock's been pressuring her yep. to fucking leave her kid with nannies and shit when she doesn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I think she has a legitimate problem in this area she does definitely for sure but she's telling ariana that she's struggling with her not having a relationship with sandoval because he was such a good friend to her and ariana's giving her this look like okay what do you (laughs) want me to do about it but she's being comforting like you said Mm -hmm. she's telling her she loves her and that sounds really hard and i'm sorry you're going through all of that and then they hang up and then Katie and Ariana talk shit about it. And Katie's like, um, Sheena's a fucking mess. Yeah. <laughs> like she sounds fucking miserable because she is. Mm-hmm. And they again reiterate that, okay, that's cool that you're struggling with that. But if you start being friends with Sandoval, I'm not going to be your friend. Right. And that's that. Well, in the after show, Katie calls Sheena a man sympathizer. What? Yeah. She says Sheena has always been a man sympathizer. And uh, she's got a point because, for example, when Tom and Katie broke up and Tom Schwartz was 100 percent a problem in that relationship. I'm not saying Katie wasn't, but Tom Schwartz definitely acted badly in that marriage. Sheena went to Tom and started spending way more time with Tom. Now, I don't know how close she was Mm -hmm. as a friend to Katie, but she immediately took the side of Tom. And we could probably go back through the seasons and see a lot of times when Sheena has done that. But Sheena refers to herself as a boy's girl. Interesting. Isn't that what people say about Lisa Vanderpump too? Yes, very much so. Very, very similar energy. But she's always kind of been around the dudes and the girls have always kind of kept her on the outskirts. For example, Stassi, Katie, Mm -hmm. Kristen were always kind of antagonizing Sheena, which is why I liked her for so long. Yeah. Because she was kind of like the odd one out. Mm -hmm. But she always hung with the dudes. And so she chooses, she tends to choose the dudes over the checks. Hmm. So then that tracks with her i think it tracks i think what katie's saying it it tracks yeah it makes a lot of sense and it seems like from the preview sheena is gonna try and be friends with sandoval again because she believes him for how sorry he is right and i'm just wondering is he giving you more money (laughs) i don't know well again let me float the theory that maybe they can kind of all tell that ariana is cycling herself out of this Mm series like yeah maybe she's not going to be on vanderpump rules anymore because she's so fucking tired of it and she's also refusing to film with people which i mean i don't think you can do for a long period of time before the production company tells you to fucking kick rocks right so maybe she's trying to align herself with the person she thinks is going to be there longer mm, interesting yeah. theory well then after the text or no, after the facetime call and everything we get back to tahoe now, everybody took a gondola ride up to the lake or something. I don't know, because after the gondola ride, they get on the yacht, and that's when we get to the fight. But right. the gondola ride, to me, was interesting only because 
the boys rode together and then the girls rode together and Brock was antagonizing Sandoval in the gondola and he was accusing him and his publish like his publicists and stuff his mm-hmm. PR team for spreading rumors about Brock having a ref- uh, an affair with Rachel during the whole scandal thing right and do you remember me mentioning this to you yes at the very beginning like before we even started the series yeah. I was like yeah there was some kind of rumor that Brock's a cheater yeah and yeah it was alleged that he did something with Rachel and so Brock says in this scene that uh, they know it was Tom yeah they know off the record it was Tom's mm-hmm. team to try and get the heat off of Tom and Tom denies it and he's like that never happened that's not true blah 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 and then of course Brock has to say in his talking head like that affair never happened Rachel was like my little sister I would never let that happen because I'm married to Sheena mm. but I'm like I don't know dude mm. My first impression of you was cheater vibes. Like, maybe you didn't cheat with Rachel. That's cool, but I feel like maybe you would have cheated with somebody else. Yeah, that's just my straightforward, fake, psychic, intuitive hunch about that dude. Yeah, lame job. Yeah. So that was the only interesting thing about the gondola ride. But then we get to the boat in Tahoe, and this is where everything kind of pops off Mm -hmm. between Lala and Sandoval. So everybody's drinking. Everybody's partying. It looks beautiful. It does. The gorgeous. weather looks amazing. Have you ever been there? Because you're from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Which is not the Northwest, but it's it's, it's near Northern the Pacific, California. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Northern California. That's like the only area in California that I've never been to. It's gorgeous. Lake Tahoe. You've been there? Yes, I've been to Lake Tahoe. Oh, yes. It looks absolutely so gorgeous. So beautiful. With and it mountains. does look just spectacular oh, when they're I out on the amazing. boat. But like... This is why we can't have nice things yeah. because people start to drink or then people start to pop off. And mm-hmm. actually, Tom's not drinking and Lala's not drinking, but yeah. we're going to have a fight there. Yes. Well, because Lala sits down with Sandoval and she's like, I want to talk to you a little bit. And she was very calm at first. She's just like, I just want to talk to you about how you had the ability to lie to my face for so long. And that wasn't cool. Like, why don't you apologize for that? And then, of course, Sandoval reacts and he's like, but you're a liar, too. Mm-hmm. You lied for six years. And I guess he's talking about her relationship with that toad yes. guy. Remember, like, let's just to give some context okay. here. When Lala was with Randall in the good years, like they would give people NDAs if they flew on Randall's private jets or went to any of their parties. Like you can't talk wow. about Randall. You can't talk about anything. She was very private, did not share a lot of information when they asked. She was just like, fuck you. I don't have to tell you anything. Mm. When he's finally introduced to the group and people start questioning like what's going on with this though like wasn't he married this or that which tom sandoval tried to bring up a few times lala popped the fuck off got all crazy don't you ever question my man my man's a good man all this shit so she did not share her life Mm -hmm. for years i think tom's right about that it's just the wrong time and again You can't do it this way. It's like every single member of this cast has done shitty things. Right. And they're absolutely hypocrites in my opinion. Yeah. But now is about you. Right. This moment is about the shit that you did. And what she's saying is like, while you were calling me out for a lack of transparency, and she even says, I think she says somewhere in this episode, I mean, and I was. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't share. But while you were doing that, you're also fucking Rachel. Right. And I have a problem with that. Yeah. I have a problem with that too. And like, to me, when he was accusing her of lying, I'm like, this isn't the same kind of a thing. Like, because Lala maintains the idea that she didn't know that Randall toad guy was married, that she was a mistress. Right. I'm like, okay, whatever. But I mean, like, it's still not the same context to me i'm like it's not they had a whole relationship she was only with this guy she wasn't cheating on randall was she no exactly but she was cheating with randall what do you mean well he was cheating oh (laughs) so like she was she was the mistress right she was a collaborator in that she says she didn't know but that is in question and i think she's Mm. slowly but surely trying to accept the fact that that's what she was she was a mistress she didn't i didn't know i was a mistress didn't you Mm. we all did though how did we know that watching you when you were doing your private jets and your 
Range Rovers. How did we know that you were a mistress, but you didn't? You absolutely did, in my opinion. Yeah. And you're just not owning it. Like, how are you that stupid? And so Tom had a problem with that because absolutely you're not sharing your life on this show where I'm going to have to share fucking everything. Right. Like, I'm getting into physical fights with Jax and fucking Stassi's hitting Kristen. Like, we're showing absolutely everything, but you get to hide stuff? Why? Yeah. I mean, I guess I see where Tom's coming from. But again, like you said, it's not it's the not, fucking right. time. <laughs> right. Like, just say you're sorry. And that's a, essentially what happens because he doesn't say sorry at first. He doesn't take any accountability because it's Tom fucking Sandoval. And so then Lala blows up. She starts calling him a fucking dirty liar. In her talking head, she's like, maybe I overestimated the self-work he's been doing. I'm like, yeah, bitch, you have. Well, but can I just be devil's advocate here? Sure. I mean, like, Lala, you get triggered so quickly Facts, like if you want to sit down and have a reasonable conversation even if it's with a narcissist like you're not helping yourself by immediately escalating when he doesn't do exactly what you want him to do right. or say what you want him to say and so then she's yelling then she's stomping around then she starts to cry and all of that is just dog brain mm -hmm. like there's a part of your brain that we get into when we get really angry and we're arguing that is just not present yeah at all you're just barking 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 and nobody's hearing you she really needs to learn how to calm the fuck down and communicate in a different way yeah and why bother with Tom? Right. Because you why? know who he is. Yeah. But she does call him a groomer, which I was like, I dang. Know. That was great. And an isolate. You yeah. isolate and you groom. Which I'm like, I feel like I'm that's like, true, yes, though. Queen. Yes. And I, I feel, feel like that's about true. Lala because she's so problematic in, in ways, but at the same time, she's a truth teller. Yeah. She's calling it like it is. And then, of course, that's when, once she calls him a groomer, that's when Tom starts really freaking out. He's like, don't fucking call me a groomer. He starts standing up and starts yelling and freaking <laughs> out. Yeah. And then Brock comes in because of course he's got to center himself yeah, yeah. and then sheena comes in so brock and sheena both are yelling at tom being like dude all she wants is an apology like you just have to acknowledge that you affected everybody like we just want apologies for all of this shit and for you to take accountability and then for some reason after brock says that and after sheena says that then tom comes to his senses and in his talking head he's like yeah, I realize I'm being kind of hypocritical. Like, I should just say sorry. So he does say sorry in the moment. He hugs Lala and cries. Yeah. Behind I, his sunglasses. Yeah. I think Lala is trying to work on this relationship authentically. She just doesn't know how. Yeah. I think Tom is completely manipulative and just trying to get an ally back on his side with Lala. Yep. Like, he's not really interested in a friendship with, with her. In the after show... I heard Lala say that it was really great that Sheena went in, not Brock, but Sheena went in to talk to Tom because she spoke very calmly. Mm. She spoke in a way that Tom could hear. She's not barking in her dog brain right. so that Tom gets really defensive. And then he was able to say, I get what you're saying. Let me apologize. But as I said at the top of this episode, if you don't lead with, you're absolutely right. I betrayed you. I betrayed the group. If you don't lead with, I'm actually really sorry. I've been thinking about it. I'm in therapy. These are the things that I'm going to do to get better. All the things you should do. If what you lead with is, well, what about you? Yeah. Then you are not sitting in the energy of the shit that you did and taking ownership of it. Exactly. And he won't. I don't think he will. Well, how can he? Wasn't it just three weeks ago that he was being interviewed by New York <laughs> Times and he likened his popularity to what happened to OJ and George Floyd? Like, yeah. this is where his fucking head is at. Yes. He's a fucking idiot. He's a ding dong. He's so dumb. He's a dope. And, but for some reason, like, Lala takes his hug and apology seriously. And she's like, okay. I think, she, I think there's so many psychological things that we could talk about with that too because i really think that lala needs um feels wants the validation and affirmation from men everybody from men in particular oh. i don't know why it's very paradoxical to Daddy me and issues. that might be yeah that might be controversial um but i mean i just feel in my spirit that she needs that and mm. that's probably how she ended up with Randall Emmett in the first place, an older dude. I mean, that's what, that mm. would make sense. Because I'm like, how? As a beautiful girl like you, you do don't you need end up with fucking... Pieces of shit. Toad! Mm -mm. I mean, I don't understand. There's plenty of wealthy billionaires <laughs> who look good that you could end up with. But there's something inside of you willing to accept that. Yes. And you had a kid with him. I I'm know. like, oh my Speaking God. of which, did what? you hear that Lala 
is pregnant with her second baby. Shut and up. And she did what y'all are going to do, you lesbians. She got artificially inseminated. And she's like, the best thing about being what? pregnant is that the father doesn't fucking exist. What? Yes. So she went to a spoin bank. Dang. And she took that by the reins with her own agency she went out and she selected the jizz that she wanted to line up with the family she wanted to create she doesn't want a man to fuck it up that's great and she's pregnant she's got to poop she's got to be at least four or five months oh my god that's great isn't that cool i can't wait yeah i love that for that's her. awesome well then maybe she's in therapy and she's healing yeah, i think she is i think she is valid her need for validation from men so that's you can great. tell because she calls herself on her own shit she a lot. does yes she acknowledges it but that's it what i like her. doesn't mean that there's no shit yeah so but we all have shit of course so i mean we, nobody's perfect she's sober she's trying to work mm -hmm. out her shit she's not perfect but compared to fucking thomas andoval i mean worlds apart yes one thousand percent so after they make up and everything everybody gets off the boat and brock and Schwartz are drunk as fuck. Yeah. And they had this like little scene where Brock tells Schwartz, he's like, you didn't hit on any of the girls on the boat at all, which I'm like, okay, gay conspiracy. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> like, it just feels like they're setting it up for that. Tom and Tom staring at each other from across <sighs> the yacht. Yeah. I mean. If only we could show these people who we really are. I mean. Uh, Please Brokeback do. Mountain, bitch. Please do. I'm just saying. I mean, that would be great. I would love it for them. Well, we did see Tom Schwartz awkwardly asked to give his phone number to one of the crew yeah but okay. it was so so dry it uh -huh. was so no chemistry it was That's like, what I'm saying. you're just doing this for the cameras yeah to appear that he's straight i don't <laughs> think he's i don't think he's gay but but the only i did notice that i i was just like that's really what brock said that's the first thing he says but they're drunk so i'm like maybe it's just whatever maybe it's just bro talk i don't know but then they talk about katie a little bit mm -hmm. because schwartz is like well you know i'm still dealing with you know, the whole Katie stuff. Like I've been in love for a long time. And as much as I hate Katie. <laughs> right. Doesn't miss an opportunity to throw her under the bus. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. You were with this chick Nobody for 12 years. <laughs> like what the hell? As much as I hate Katie and there's a lot of things to hate about her. And I mean a lot. A lot. And I'm like, I've yet to see one thing. Right. But whatever. Um, he says he has a lot of love and respect for her because she was willing to date him when he was a broke ass Ho ass loser. Right. <laughs> Which Before he had anything. And truly, verily I say unto you, yeah. the only reason he has anything right now is because of Katie. Yeah. Because Katie legitimately worked for Lisa Vanderpump. She mm -hmm. was literally a server. Tom Schwartz was not. Tom Schwartz was just her dumb boyfriend. And <sighs> it was Katie, Stasi, Jax, and Tom, and Sheena who started this whole series wow. and she brought Tom along. And then Tom goes on to be on winter house and summer house. Tom goes on to become famous, make a lot of money. He gets the opportunity from Lisa Vanderpump to join, to open Tom Tom, which is a restaurant bar, mm -hmm. not Katie, not yeah. Stassi, not any of the women. Of course. And he gets the opportunities and ultimately they break up, but make no mistake. The only reason he's anybody is because of Katie. And so for mm. him to continue to take every single opportunity to drag her yeah it's really like, shitty you you act like you want to be her friend you act like you want to have this great co-parenting relationship for your dogs but when she's not there and even when she is like you take all the opportunities to shit on her that's why i don't really respect tom schwartz he's got that aw shucks mm -hmm. kind of charm but i'm like i see you you motherfucker you're slimy yeah i'm seeing it now in every episode i'm like i really don't like you yeah, like, i don't you... care if you have a succulent you yes. suck yeah he does fucking <laughs> suck that's all he has now right is his succulents and his little apartment yep oh god embarrassing and then it's the last night in tahoe everybody's packing up i'm like were they only there for two nights yeah, I think they got there on a Friday. They're leaving on a Sunday, honey. Is that all Schwartz could afford because he's the one that paid for this? No, Bravo definitely put them in the VRBO. I mean, they had to. Absolutely. This is all production. It has to be because yeah. I'm like, that house was fancy. Tricked out. That was rich. Stunning. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's the last night in Tahoe and Sandoval thanks Schwartz for inviting him because, you know. Thanks, man. This was a breakthrough. It was a breakthrough for really all of us. It changed my life. Oh, my God. So dramatic. <laughs> uh, and then this is where we have Sheena and Lala in the bed. And Sheena's right. on Instagram and Twitter obsessively checking her mentions 
because right. she's a narc because she's looking <laughs> at she posted we didn't even talk about this but she had posted a photo or somebody had posted a photo of her standing next to tom sandoval she had her arm behind him because she was taking a photo for somebody's birthday or whatever and so everybody on the internet allegedly is saying oh my god she knows bffs with tom sandoval what a bitch what mm -hmm. a traitor and sheena's taking it very personally and she's in bed with lala <laughs> looking at her mentions mm -hmm. and lala's like why are you looking at that and she like i'm not searching for it it's just you know there it's on my timeline <laughs> Like, whatever. <laughs> Lala's like, I don't see that at all. I don't mm -hmm. see that in my algorithm. I haven't seen anybody talking shit. You're literally looking for it. Right. Sheena's taking it personally. And then this leads into the conversation again about how she's struggling with her relationship with Tom Sandoval. And then she starts crying. Right. And then she brings up Ariana. No, Lala brings up Ariana. Because Lala's like, has Ariana defended you at all? Has she been there for you? And she just like, no. Like, what are you talking about? All we see is, all we see, the footage that we see, like, there could be other things happening behind the scenes. I guess. But from the footage that we do see, I feel like Ariana's, for going through what Ariana's going through, I feel like she's giving a lot of support yeah. to Sheena and to other people. Yeah. And we literally saw you in this episode, FaceTime her, and she was being there for you as you're crying about struggling with a relationship with her ex. Right. And who she betrayed her fundamentally yes. yes and changed her entire life and ariana in that facetime i forgot was telling sheena she's like look it's not like i don't want you to be friends with him like you could do that we just won't be as close but i don't want you to be friends with somebody like him because he's a piece of shit like and i i worry about how he will treat you and i don't mm -hmm. think he cares about you like right. she's literally looking out for sheena and then for sheena in this scene with lala to act like ariana's being a shitty friend mm -hmm. and to lala like lala's kind of co-signing it yeah and being like well yeah i mean she's going through a lot and she's like doing all these brand deals and stuff and she deserves boom, that boom 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 jealousy that's all jealousy from mm -hmm. those two girls i'm like fuck y'all yeah they see how much money ariana's making they see the zeitgeist the national consciousness and that ariana's right in the center of it and I remember what they were doing online at this time, too. They were doing the fucking most. Mm -hmm. And Sheena got a lot of profit, a lot of attention, a lot of shine. So did Lala. But the fact that they're still jealous yeah. over something terrible that happened to Sheena is pretty wild. To, I'm sorry, uh, to Ariana yeah. is pretty wild to me. And then when Sheena's crying, why can't it ever be about me girl i mean like just to utter a statement like that i know i mean if i'm uttering a statement <laughs> like that again i have the facility to pop out of my own body and see how i sound to other people like right i would be so hard pressed in any situation to say something like that even if i deserved it uh, for real I'd be like what what about me it's so fucking narcissistic and immature yes the gall that she has the hubris the audacity i know to say this on camera when she knows ariana's gonna see this i know i like people are making memes of this scene as sheena's laying there <laughs> <laughs> that angle is so unflattering it i is. feel bad but it it's is kind of funny um <laughs> but it's bad her saying that i'm like wow i'm like this whole episode was about you like what are you talking about when has I it know. ever been about you literally the last five episodes have been about you you crying you've been highlighted a lot we've been talking about your emo night and your dumb music oh my god but like you'd have to have watched every single season she got married twice she got a divorce we heard about that she released his music she dates oh all these fucking losers <laughs> right and we always hear about that like she is featured so prominently in this show like i would much rather have other side characters yeah. get more time than sheena and i have historically over the course of the series like peter magical like i'd like to know more about peter magical Who's you that? haven't even met him he's a guy who works for lisa with the same crowd like i would have always just wanted to know more about him huh. and just other side characters but i'm just saying sheena has gotten a lot of time in front of the camera she's had yeah. a lot of storylines yeah for her to say this is absolutely da lulu do you think it's scripted or do you think she actually feels that way? I feel like she's maybe a little bit being massaged by the producers mm -hmm. to feel this way. But because she's in such a weird, heightened, emotional, anxious state, it's easy for her to tip over into that paranoia. That's embarrassing. And it's totally going to cause issues. It's going to cause issues 100%. with Ariana and Katie. She's going to have the nerve to go to Lisa Vanderpump's house. Girl. And talk about Dancing with the Stars. Ariana knows how much I wanted that. 
I think jealousy is normal. And yeah. when you see your real tight homegirl getting all the opportunities and you're just sitting there, I can see how that would hurt. But like to say that out loud with your own voice and words is crazy to me. That's wild. Those are inside thoughts. Like those are yeah. things that you think yeah. inside yourself and you check yourself in your right. brain and you're like, well, that's a little bit shitty. Do that's you know you're little... saying that so we can all hear that? Exactly. Like, we can hear you speaking right now. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, that is embarrassing. That's why I'm asking, is production actually trying to throw Tom and Sheena and Lala under the bus because of these types of scenes? Because when you look at it straight on, it looks like, oh, shit, they're trying to reform Tom Sandoval. Yeah. They're trying to bring him back into the, the friend group. They're trying to get all the friends to forgive him. But when you kind of step back and look at all of the angles, it's like, mm, it kind of feels like they're doing Sheena dirty. I mean, it kind of... And Tom, too. Nobody's buying it. No, nobody's buying the Tom stuff. But I have been seeing people being kind of pro Sheena and pro Lala. Like, people have even commented to us on Instagram and stuff being like, you know, you guys should give Sheena more credit. I'm like, well, we're trying, but uh, <laughs> she's yeah. like annoying, you know? So, I mean, we're just calling it as we see it. Right. But I don't know. Maybe they're trying to throw them under the bus, but it's it feels like everybody's trying to be anti-Ariana. Ariana. Mm -hmm. And now I'm saying it wrong. Right. Because Lala in this scene is trying to throw her under the bus. And I'm just well, like, what the fuck? Lala in the interstitial in her talking head, she's like, Sheena has shown up for Ariana time and time again. And it's time now for Ariana to show up for Sheena. And I'm like, why? What are you talking about? Ariana has been there the entire time. Oh, and she even says in um, the preview for next week, something like, she, you know, Ariana's on Dancing Without the Stars, which is quite a step up from being my background dancer. Oh, my God. And then I missed that. And then there's footage of Ariana being her background dancer. That's... That's petty. That is so petty. LaBelle. What the That fuck? is petty LaBelle. Like, so, uh, this is... I think this is going to get pretty interesting. And I actually have a suspicion that this is all kind of being curated and designed to get us to an end result that we haven't yet determined. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I think we're going to end up in a very interesting place. And by the time we get to the reunion Ugh. with Ariana having seen all the shit that these girls are saying, I think there's a potential for it to be very good. I'm excited for the reunions high key because the ones from season 10 were lit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm so excited. They're typically so always good. Oh, my God. Are they always fighting? Oh, yeah. They're always fighting. I love it. Yeah. That's somebody's always love. breaking up. You yes. know, somebody's getting together. There's some problems in the friend group. I live. Who's the number one guy? Mm. You know, arguments and such. But yeah, they, they do tend to pop off. So I don't know. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not I don't not like Sheena. And again, I, I want to advocate for yeah. like her mental health right now, which I think she's making way more out of what's going on because of her mental health. For sure. Like a baseline issue that she might be dealing with. And so I have compassion for that. But at the same time, some of this is a little Delulu. Yeah. Check yourself. Period. A little bit. Yeah. But yeah, the preview looks interesting next week. I mean, there was also Lala talking about wanting to rebrand. This is where she does talk about the sperm donor. Um, Schwartz goes on a date with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then Katie and Lala argue, which I'm oh, excited yeah. about. Oh, yeah. get into it. Ah. Because Katie is good at argumentation. Is she? But Lala's better, honey. Oh. And I think a lot of people in the friend group, in the girls section of the friend group, are intimidated by Katie because of how mean she can be. They know mm -hmm. she can be from seasons before. And if anybody's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, it's going to be Lala. I want to see it. Yeah. But I mean, I just feel like Lala's going to be on the wrong side of that argument. Yeah, probably. It's probably going to be some bullshit. And then Sandoval. It's going to be about Sheena, probably. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. She's going to be like, why don't you care about Sheena? And then Katie's going to be like. Because uh, uh, she sucks. God, she's a grown woman. Katie doesn't like Sheena. She really hasn't ever liked her. I mean, I kind of don't really like Sheena. I mean, I can see the goodness in Sheena and everything. And I totally empathize with her with her mental issues right now that she's going through but she's annoying if you had watched previous seasons she would have had stored up a lot of credit with you so that you could give her a lot of grace in this season not in her music though but not in her music <laughs> not like her music. a lot of people have always historically just hated sheena well that's i've sad. never been one of those people yeah. yeah you always root for the underdogs though I do. you do i do and then the last thing that was in the preview was sandoval has a conversation with lisa vanderpump about rachel Oh. Which will be interesting. Okay. 
it's probably just going to be talking about how he loved her. He cares right. about her. And yeah. now she doesn't want anything to do with him. Which, I mean, yeah. Well, Why I would be she? here for you. <laughs> You're 42. You're a la hooser. You paint your nails. You're going to lose your home. You're going to lose your restaurant. Yeah. You're going to lose your friend group. Like, ooh, why would she? Yeah. Yeah. You suck. Yeah. So, he yeah. Ki- he kind of does suck. Well, we will be back to discuss that, of course, next week, Thursday slash Friday. Yeah. Is that what we do? Yeah. Um, And we will be back next week at the beginning of the week to talk Seeking Sister Wives. Which is crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. You watch that, right? Yes. And Girl. I listen. As a former fundamentalist, having to listen to and even look upon this Garrick guy, I've never watched this before. Oh my God, he's a piece but like, of shit. When I tell you I had my fucking concordance out, when I tell you I'm like fucking Googling scripture, the shit he's talking about, I went crazy. So I can't wait to talk about that. We're going to have to catch up on the first episode and then we'll do the second episode. And that's going to be on Tuesday slash Wednesday, Wednesday of yeah. next week and just a reminder we are not going to be covering sister wives rewinds for a indeterminate while. yeah, yeah. We d- we're not quite sure when we're going to feel ready to come back for that um so we will let you know yeah if and when we do you will be the first to know but yeah. we'll definitely be back to talk about some crazy reality tv yes bitch um and so is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons that'll be all drop well if you love our podcast i sure hope you like our videos on youtube subscribe to our channel and then go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review <laughs> it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much thank you thank you thank you and until next time never forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out